All right, guys, I'm Zach with Salt's Gone. We're here. We're going to show you a little bit about some specific applications on aircraft. Uh, we're going to save you some time. We're going to save you some money. And I'm going to introduce you to Julian Irwin. He's got over 40 years in the industry. And he's going to walk you through this aircraft. Hey, guys, my name is Julian Irwin. This is a 1971 Beechcraft Bonanza. Um, actually, one of the first planes I rode in, my dad owned one of these. I used to sit on a phone book and actually fly it. Kind of fun to get back to my roots. I've been in the airlines for about 35 years, started out in general aviation. So it's kind of fun today to be talking about this. Corrosion is one of the biggest problems we have in aviation. Uh, not addressing corrosion and preventing corrosion is what salt scalding can really do for you. Uh, if we don't prevent and take care of the corrosion, it could take on an aircraft like this and make it completely unworthy within a couple of years. We're in Houston, Texas. We're on a coastal environment. Humidity, salty air, some of the worst things that you can have uh, for what we have. So we have a way to help you out with that and keep your plane safe. Yeah, this is some of the spots we need to look at when we're talking about corrosion with your general aviation aircraft. You get a lot of pitting and stuff along the uh, propeller itself with friction and things of that nature along with the hub. These are places that uh, will start getting some corrosion that you need to really prevent in these areas. We all know that these Macaulay props are not a very uh, inexpensive thing to be dealing with. So the more we can protect that, the better. We can also see where you're starting to get a little pitting here off the paint. And this is the aluminum below the paint. Aluminum is hard to tell that it's actually corroding or not. It doesn't look like a normal rust. What you'll see, it'll be kind of a milky looking color. And once you get to that point, it's already too late to fix this part. You're gonna have to replace it. So the more that we can keep the salt off of this, keep the corrosive effects off of this, uh, the better shape you're gonna be in. So you're gonna actually have to replace this piece. Uh, we're safe to be shooting right into the engine in here. You're going to be on the intake. We're down here in Houston along a coastal environment. You're going to be getting a lot of salt and things of that nature into your engine. We're perfectly safe to be spraying inside the engine itself. And the other problems we'll have down here, especially in a retractable gear setting, uh, even if you're going up north, you're landing on treated runways. They actually do salt taxiways and runways up there. And just down here in a coastal environment, you're going to be getting a lot of salt just off of the taxiways and runways themselves. So it tends to get brought up into the wheel well with the wheel when they retract it. And then you've got an environment where the salt and the chloride is just sitting up there. And you really need to be keeping this uh, clean because if you start corroding the linkage and the stuff that draws this stuff in, that could get very expensive for you. All right, guys, as high speeds as bananas, I think John told me it uh, does about 180 knots a little over 200 miles an hour so when you're doing 200 miles an hour especially down with you and your takeoffs and landings we can get some pitting uh, when we start getting some um, debris and stuff it'll start taking the paint away and we all know it's very expensive uh, to be painting the aircraft themselves uh, and in this day and age which is a good thing we can't use the old lead based zinc chromate based paints that we used to be able to use so we really need to do a better job of keeping these surfaces clean uh, here again, the aluminum and the metal is exposed, and if we can keep uh, regular washing of salts gone to keep all the salts, and not just the salt, but other chlorides off the leading edge, we'll tend to uh, protect this uh, much better in the long term. Another problem we have with airplane, anywhere where two metals come together, uh, would tend to get a uh, kind of electrolysis going on in these areas. This is one thing salt's gone is really good. We're just basically flooding this area with electrons, stopping the salt and the NA and the CL getting together. And it'll actually draw some of this corrosion out because you're flooding the area with electrons, which is part of the problem with you get two dissimilar metals uh, coming together. So this is a little different uh, for aircraft than it is with uh, marine application. All right, another kind of corrosion we have to worry about with aircraft is crevice corrosion. Anywhere where we have uh, rivets, washers, these hinge points right here for your aileron. These are places that will kind of wear a little bit. The salt will get in here, the other chlorides, and you'll get a really uh, bad area of corrosion. You can see here where the back two come together, salt will get up in these areas and it'll stagnate and it'll stay there and it'll start rusting out these areas of your aircraft. Very important to be using uh, regularly washing your aircraft with salts gone to keep the chlorides and uh, the other corrosive materials out of here. Also, if these are greased or any kind of oiling or protection you have on these hinge points, salts gone will not emulsify the oil or the grease. It will leave it intact and keep your protection in place for uh, the lubrication. 
Another thing with the flaps, when we extend our flaps out to make a landing and then we land in a coastal environment on salty runways, also up north, if they've treated your runways when your flaps are down, you're going at a high speed. These uh, chlorides and salts get kicked up into your hinge points and into the back side of your flaps. And then you bring your flaps up and they are uh, actually trapping that salt. And it's really important to extend your flaps, do a good washing, get the salts going on the front edge of these and your hinge points so you're not trapping that salt up inside your flap assembly. And this is kind of specific to Bonanza, but not, you know, all our craft have something along these lines, but these are magnesium rudder They do not make magnesium rudder anymore. And there's already a little pitting going on in the paint here. And if we get the corrosion into this magnesium, you cannot get this part. So a lot of the older general aviation aircraft, uh, if the corrosion was left unchecked here in this pitting, uh, these would become unworthy, and to actually find this part would be very difficult. Your plane is unusable until you could actually find a used rudder somewhere, which is very difficult to come by. So preventing the corrosion on the aircraft with regular washing of salts gone is really worth uh, the investment. One thing that's real important, guys, when we're dealing with airplanes, we want to do a very soft wash. We don't want to be doing a pressure wash, and that's what we do with salt gone. We're just using a normal hose, applying it very gently so we're not pitting or doing any of this kind of stuff to your aircraft. We also use very expensive polishes and we also do corrosion treatment where we're actually using oil-based uh, treatments when you're doing your annuals or your sea checks, things along those lines. Salt's gone will not emulsify the oil, so it will not take any of the protection that you put onto your plane and into your plane that you're using to protect from the corrosion. We're basically just cleaning all the salt, all chlorides, all the things that would uh, actually get into this freestanding stuff and keeping you clear of the salts and the things that actually begin the corrosion, but it will not hurt any of your corrosion protection that's oil-based because it will not emulsify the oil. So we spent a lot of time covering the main parts of the aircraft, but we really didn't spend any time covering how salts gone works. So there's three main components to it. One, we wanna remove the salts, and we do that through the chemical process of chelation which is quite simply giving the sodium something it likes more than the chlorine and the chlorine something it likes more than the sodium. This is commonly done in other markets through the use of an acid. One of the important things about salts gone is even the concentrate of the product before it's mixed with water at the one to 100 ratio, it's pH neutral. So any type of wax, ceramic coatings, finishes, different metals, there's no acid in the product itself that's gonna attack anything. The second part of salts gone is the corrosion inhibitors. So essentially what corrosion inhibitors are, they're amines that are going to provide extra electrons to the surface. So corrosion is a loss of electrons in the metal itself. The extra inhibitors uh, via the extra electrons inhibit corrosion through the use of having something to sacrifice on the surface. Um, and this is, again, something that you guys might uh, put corrosion inhibitors on the aircraft through uh, oil-based products, spray-on type products. And those are great. This is simply a complement to it. So before you apply any of those oil-based products, you always want to be sure that the surface is chloride-free. Otherwise, you'll simply be trapping those inside of there. But <clears throat> SaltsCon does not emulsify oil. So you can go right on top of it and hit it just like any other part of the aircraft, and there's zero chance of removing any of the protection that you've already put on there. And then lastly, there's just surfactant in the product. Surfactants are simply soaps, right? They allow to eliminate surface tension and for dirt and other particulates, things that might slow down your aircraft or things that might just not be aesthetically pleasing to simply slide off of the surface. So we've got a lot of different ways to apply the product. Uh, the most simple way is our hose end sprayer, uh, which right now we've got water running to the hose. When we're ready to apply, we're just simply going to Turn the water on. And now we have salts gone coming out of the hose. These are great because when we're ready to rinse, we just switch it over to water only and we're easily able to rinse the product off. So applying salts gone is literally as simple as just turning it on, hitting the various parts of the aircraft. And Julian's gonna go into a little bit more in depth on some of the key components that he spoke about earlier. All right, guys. Your maintenance departments and technical support, they're gonna to wanna to see the same thing the FAA wants to see, that this is totally biodegradable, totally pH neutral. Uh, it's safe to use on any of your paints. 
Uh, it's just a spray on, spray off. It's water soluble. It has a very low foaming, but you need some foam to see if you're actually where you've covered and then when you're actually rinsing this off. We usually just start at the top of the fuselage. We want to stay out of, you know, put it directly into static ports, things of that nature for your autopilot. I uh, really want to get the front of the props really good. It's okay to get right into the front. We have shown you some of the bare metal here. We definitely want to get on and really hit down around your landing gear area. Also, right up in the landing gear wheel well area, we really want to hit that thoroughly. We'll bring a lot of salt uh, and, and corrosive activity will be brought up when you're making takeoffs and landings. Just take it down your control surfaces, over the wing, same with your brakes. Here again, up in the wheel wells. Across the top of our wings. Just spray the whole down, the whole aircraft down very liberally. When I get along the ailerons and some of these joints, we talked about the crevice protection. I'm gonna hit these real hard. Along the rivet lines, I'm gonna be hitting real hard. So in case there is any of that dissimilar metal, dissimilar metal uh, corrosion, we're gonna take care of that in our flaps. Just start on the top of the fuselage and let it just kind of come down. Here again, hitting the back side of the brakes, all the joints and up into the wheel well. All right, guys, we really want to hit the magnesium uh, rudder vaders very hard on the Bonanza. Like I said, this is a part you cannot get. So if this corrodes out, it's going to be very difficult to find. So it's much better to prevent the corrosion than actually be dealing with it. Here again, all the joints. If these are well lubed, that's okay. We're not gonna emulsify any of the oil. It's gonna keep the protection that you had on. You can see I'm not spraying it directly into the static ports or things like that. It's okay to get a little water in there. Same thing on this side. All the flaps, extending the flaps is not a bad idea. If I've been in some uh, kind of snowy or salty environment uh, to extend them and go ahead and get all the joints there. We're not gonna do that today. Make sure I'm getting the brakes and up into the wheel well. Wheel wells, especially on retractable gear, they're very susceptible to get some corrosion up in there. Get the leading edge, we talked about the painting, uh, the pitting with some of the paint. Here again, we are not, we are totally pH neutral, so our product will not do any pitting and cause more of the crevice corrosion. And any of the polishes or anything like that you're using, this will not break it down at all. All right, guys, and there you go. Now I'm just gonna switch over to the water and just rinse the aircraft off. It's really that simple. Uh, it won't take away stains. If you have some spots where you've got a oil or some kind of a stain, you just wanna use a light cloth. You can see we're not using a lot of pressure here. If you have some kind of a stain or a very soft brush so we don't hurt our paint. And if we don't get all the salts gone off, that's okay too because it's just those electrons and the, uh, and the other corrosion protection parts will just stay on it. Here you see it's gonna rinse off real nice. It's nice to have a very low foaming product that we could see when we're actually knocking the uh, salt gone itself off. Make sure I can get in all the seams we had talked about where the metals come together. And right now I'm just spraying this with straight water. We just went from the salt gone part to the water. You can see this is very easy to do. John takes this plane over to Hilton Head a lot. This plane's sitting outside on a coastal environment when he's not here in the, uh, when he's not here in his hangar. So the more we wash with this, the more we're protecting the aircraft. It says, uh, if you read any corrosion, very frequent washes with corrosion inhibitors is important. Like I say, along with the corrosion protection, there is surfactant in the product, which is just soaps. It'll leave a really nice, look to your aircraft. And that's it. If you come in from a flight, let's say you've flown from Florida over to Bimini, you've got all that salt on your aircraft. 10 minutes, we're all set here. There you have it, folks. A clean aircraft that is, uh, has a really good coating of uh, corrosion inhibitor on top of it. All right, guys, you can see now the plane looks really good. I mean, there is a lot of surfactant in our product, which makes it really look nice. You can see the windows are clean. Man, the paint is nice and smooth. We've got all the salt, all the corrosion off of this aircraft. Uh, if you're in general aviation, you have a single aircraft, you can go to saltscon.com, get all the information you need about 
chelating and the way we uh, work our product. If you're with an FBO, we have different delivery methods. Uh, we actually have uh, totes that we sell uh, with quantity and different delivery methods, wall units where we use a fob to turn the uh, sauce con on and off to make it very easy to use our product. Be looking for a video coming up, which is a light twin. We'll be doing an AVO. It's at, uh, right on the coast. Doesn't have the privilege of being in a hangar, so he's got a little roof over it, but that is really exposed to the elements. Uh, humidity and a salty environment is what really does destroy our airplanes. So, very good investment, and thanks for watching.